Hey guys, this is John from Character Red again. Um, today we're going to show you how to build the cornhole boards that are pictured. Um, so the first step that you're going to have is you're going to cut all your um, all your boards to length. So you're going to have four 48 inch sides, which are going to make up the sides of your frame. You're going to have two 21 inch tops, two 21 inch bottoms, and then you're going to cut four 10 and a half inch legs you got to remember, uh, when you frame this thing out and you put your um, plywood on top, if you're using a 3 quarters inch plywood, you're going to want those to be 10 and a half inches. That way it brings your total cornhole height all the way to the top um, to the regulation 12 inches off the ground, um, no matter where you're um, sitting, sitting your boards at. So here, as you can see, I'm already starting to frame out the cornhole boards and start the assembly process. You're going to do this two different times. Um, you're going to take two 48 inch sides and then you're going to take a 21 inch top, 21 inch bottom, um, and you're going to frame it out. You don't have really anything to do with the legs right now up to this point, um, but it's important to note that I do this on my workbench because that's one of the flattest surfaces that I've found in my workshop. Um, you want to make sure that these boards are not bowed or warped or anything like that um, because those can affect the serviceability and uh, later, later on how the cornhole boards turn out uh, as, far as, as far as functionality goes. Alright, so in this next step what we're going to actually do is we're going to cut out the holes um, for the top of our cornhole boards. Um, so at first you're going to take a measurement. So you've got a 24 inch by 48 inch piece of plywood um, that you've either ripped down or you you know went to Lowe's and, and got it because um, you couldn't make the cut. You didn't have a table saw. Um, so on that 48 by 24 inch piece of plywood you're going to mark a right in the middle um, where you want the top of your board to be at 12 inches and then you're going to go down nine inches from there and what I do is I just make a little X um, as you see I have a six inch hole saw um, and here you can actually see um, me doing the measurements so I'm going to go over Go over my 12 inches, make a spot, and then I'm actually going to take my tape measure out again. I'm going to measure down at 9 inches, and then I'm going to move my tape measure a little bit over, and I'm going to make another little incision. That way I know um, that, that that X marks the spot. Um, that's where I can put my hole saw. And then I line it up exactly where I want it to be, and it's going to cut me out a perfectly um, six inch diameter hole for the hole of my cornhole boards. Now, there is another way that you can do this. If you, if you don't want to go out, spend $45, $50 on a um, fancy thing, if this is the only time that you're making cornhole boards, um, you can actually take a drill bit after you've uh, made a um, made a circle. I find that a paint can is about a six inch circle um, just to give you a little bit of a, of a reference point. And then um, after you take that drill bit, push it down in there, uh, make sure your, your hole is within the line, and then you can actually take a jigsaw and cut out the hole. After you're done cutting out your hole, 
you're going to move into actually sanding your cornhole boards and uh, getting them to the finish that you want. Um, so normally what I prefer to do, um, depending on if it's a rustic or if um, you want a, a more glossier um, look on them, um, I'll sand from 80 grit all the way up to 220 grit. Um, the rustic ones I normally don't go up as far on the finish um, for sanding goes. And then in this latest step, I'm actually cutting the circle for the leg of the cornhole board. Um, I use a, a smaller paint can lid for this as well um, because a lot of this stuff is going to get um, taken down in the sanding step, which is coming up here in just a few short seconds. Um, remember, everything is um, just making sure that the functionality of these boards and they fit um, the regulation style cornhole board um, for the dimensions that, um, that you can find online. So uh, you might have to sand the leg down a little bit. Um, pretty much a, every set that I've ever done has been a little bit different, um, but that's just the beauty with wood, woodworking. Um, wood is so forgiving and um, it, it really, um, every time you do a, a different project, you learn something new. Um. All right, for this uh, latest step, I've had a lot of people that ask me how I actually do the lines. Um, real simple, no you know fancy trick or anything like that to it. Um, like I would probably say, I'm not a real, um, I'm not an expert woodworker. Um, I just find things that, that work for me. So if this is something that works for you, um, it's definitely worked for me several times in the past and I've never had anybody complain. But what I do to get my lines is I'm going to take um, either a one inch or a half inch roll of painter's tape. Uh, I find that 3M is one of the best or the frog tape. Um, those links are down in the description of this video. So um, if you want to check them out, um, try their product out. Um, I highly recommend it. That's really the only two brands that I use, like I said. Um, but uh, I put the layer down on the outside. You've got to make sure that you're right against that line and um, your lines are straight. And then, like you can see, I am going um, every so often, just every couple of inches, and I'm making <coughs> a one-inch... Um, place marker so the tape's going to be an inch um, then there's going to be a mark at two inches and then we're going to come back later on and um, actually put another layer of tape um, from two inches to three inches um, or two inches to two and a half inches it really depends on how um, thick you want this line or how how much um, you actually want to protect um, the inside of these boards. As you can see, I mentioned that um, you should always have your line straight. Uh, make sure that you're doing a double take. That way, um, you know, you see me peel it up, put it back down. Um, this is a really important step because it will throw off the entire finish and everything that you've worked on on these boards. Um, the staining portion is just part of it and I didn't really go into a lot of the staining because it's it's kind of just just throw the color on it um, but I spend some time on this on this painting because a lot of people have asked me how I do the stripe um, and how I get it so clean looking um, and you probably would be surprised to know that a lot of times it doesn't come out clean and in fact um, the paint 
didn't come out clean on this one, and I have to touch it up. Um, so uh, that'll come on later in the video. Um, but like I said, this is a very um, meticulous part of the of the video. But I want to show the entire thing because it is very important that you're taking your time. Um, keep into consideration. I have this video um, sped up for for the sake of time because I, you know, I don't want you guys watching a, a two-hour video. Um, but if you're trying to get cornhole boards that look exactly like the ones that I that I put on the picture of the thumbnail. Um, this is the time that you're going to have to take um, protecting the inside of the boards, making sure that this tape is down, uh, making sure that you've pressed it um, flat, and you're, um, you're doing everything that you need to do. So we're actually going to move to the next part, <coughs> which is um, putting down a protective layer on the inside. That way you do not get any paint on um, the surface of the board that's going to be that dark walnut stain. So, me right now I have a ton of um, shop towels that are lying around um, and I don't really have a lot, of, a lot of drop cloths. So what I chose to do for this particular cornhole build is I'm just going to take those drop cloths and I'm going to um, put them in a interlocking pattern and then I'm going to tape them all up. Um, you can put down a drop cloth, um, newspaper, whatever you need. Um, just make sure that um, you don't have any holes in it um, or you tape any of those lines up. Um, you're going to see here in this step that I'm going to tape a majority of the lines up. Um, make sure that with this masking tape, um, if you notice, I keep it on the the inside blue line, but I never go across where you're going to be painting on. Make sure that um, you got a nice crisp line of that painter's tape or the frog tape. That way your line comes out without any, um, any smudges or anything like that. Um, this masking tape is, is solely just to... Um, keep these shop towels down, that way we don't ruin our finish.
So as you probably noticed, um, I've done a couple coats. So you want to make sure you get this um, cream or white color, whatever color you decide to um, make this line. You want to make sure that you, you get it nice and, and thick, but you don't want to um, just do one really big thick coat um, because then it might actually bleed a lot. Um, you also want to make sure that if your painter's tape starts to come up in any spots, just like I'm doing, you um, you <coughs> end up putting it down uh, and actually reapplying the tape or whatever you got to do to make sure that the inside of those boards get protected. All right, so just like our little comedy sound um, kind of hinted at this is the part where um, we get to fix all the bleeding that happened from um, the project now don't get me wrong sometimes when you're doing these projects it turns out great um, um, sometimes it's just how flat you get the painters tape and then other times it's just you know um, it's paint and stain sometimes it bleeds what you're going to do is you're going to take one of those shop towels and um, you're going to take some paint thinner and this is not going to affect the stain on your boards at all. This will only affect the areas that you apply in very small doses. Um, if you do not take anything else from this segment or this video, uh, when you're cleaning these up, this is a step that can make that can take your boards from hey has that guy ever done these before to man you know how did he get those lines on there so crisp so clean um and that's one thing that i want you guys to take away is even though there could be a little bit of bleeding you can always go back fix it and um, everything will be all good um so now what I'm doing is I'm actually drilling in <coughs> for the carriage bolts and for the legs. Um, for the legs, you're going to cut them at 5 to 10 degrees on the bottom. That way it'll give it that pitch that you want them to set on. Um, another thing that I've learned over time is please do not try to drill through both the leg and the cornhole board at the same time. For some reason, you might think that's going to save you some time, but I promise you, it's going to come out crooked. Your uh, frame, one of them is going to be crooked, and you're going to end up having to play with it and sand and redrill. It's just not worth it. Um, go do your leg, do your frame, and as long as you keep your drill straight up, you got a uh, you got a thing marked. Everything should be fine. Um, other than that, you're going to do this uh, four different times because you got four different legs on two different boards. All right, guys. For the last step, what we're going to do is we're going to actually attach the top of our boards. Um, you can wood glue this, um, you can just frad nail it. Um, I prefer to normally do wood glue depending on the time, um, that way it can set up. Um, so this brings me to the end of the video, guys. Uh, make sure that you like this video if you actually found it enjoy enjoyable, if you found it helpful. Uh, make sure you give me some comments, let me know what I can do better, um, or give me some ideas for a project that you would like to see me tackle in the upcoming future. Remember, everything that I used, including wood, um, the carriage bolts, everything can be found in the description of this video. I'm going to drop it in there for you, along with a picture of the cornhole boards on the front and the end. Thanks, guys.